Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be looking at ad blocking on Unify and I'm going to be making a fairly crude comparison to Pi-hole and just trying to work out whether or not Unify ad blocking is any good or whether or not it's still worth using a service like Pi-hole. And then at the end of this video I'm just going to show you how to set up Pi-hole on Unify. Assuming that you already have Pi-hole running, this isn't a Pi-hole setup video, it's just a Pi-hole setup on Unify video. Okay, so let's get straight into it. So I'm on my Unify dashboard. I'm going to go down to settings here and then go to security and you can see ad blocking is here. So it's really simple, you literally just tick the box and then you apply it to whichever network you want it to use. And you can have more than one network there if you want all your networks to have ad blocking on them, you can. Um, I've just selected the default network. I've just put this in already because it sometimes takes a couple of minutes to kick in so I just wanted to show you this before um, so you don't have to wait around too long. Right, so let's go now. From here, now we've got the ad blocking in. I'm just gonna check that I'm on the right Wi-Fi network. Yep, so I'm on my home network solutions and that is associated to my default network which the ad blocking's on. So I just literally went to Google and typed in ad block tester and I quite like this one down here, just the layout of this one. I think it's a German one actually. So just click on that and it literally just runs the test straight away and then it'll give us a percentage score. So that just takes a second. Okay, so we're getting about a 43% um, success on that. 43% uh, of ads are being blocked. I've seen that a little bit higher. Just this minute going, it got up to 55. So I'm not sure now why it's blocking a little bit less. But it's around the sort of halfway mark on the ads. So it's not bad. It is doing, it is doing something. Um, but it's not necessarily doing as much as it could. So now let's have a look at pie hole. So Pi-hole was a bit different. Obviously on the Unify we just had a single tick box. There wasn't really many options. You couldn't really configure it. Pi-hole is very different. There is a whole interface with all the, all sorts of configurations available on it. And you can see here, this is the number of um, domains that the ads are blocking. Um, and I've actually uploaded some lists of my own onto that as well. Um, so yeah, it's really configurable. And there's loads you can do on this. Literally, you could spend ages. I could do a whole video just telling you all the stuff on Pi-hole. But that's not what we're here for. We're just showing you the difference. So what I'll do is I'll go to, back to my ad blocker test. I'm just going to connect to my Pi-hole Wi-Fi, which is this one here. And this one is associated with um, a VLAN, which runs through the Pi-hole. So we did it again, and then just refresh this. And we'll see what percentage we'll get. So it's running its test now. Okay, so there you go, that's a big difference. So obviously we were at 43% before, and now we're at 84%, so we really have blocked a lot more ads. Now actually, I could probably get this all the way to pretty much 100% if I just went into Pi-hole, played with the uh, domains here, and just got everything listed in there. But you've got to be a little bit cautious with the ads. You don't want to block everything because you might find that services aren't usable. So I'm pretty happy with 84%. I think that's a really good uh, good figure. Certainly better than the kind of 43% we were getting from uh, Unify. But the main thing really is the fact that there's no configuration on this at all. You've literally just got the ad blocking tick box and that's it. There's nothing else going on there. You don't really know what it's doing or what you're blocking. You can't really add anything else to it. Certainly not here. You might be able to see some more stuff in the uh, kind of traffic rules and things like that, but as a sort of one easy solution, this is the uh, this is the only option here. That's my kind of very crude demonstration of, of which one seems to be working better there. So let's assume that you do want to use Pi Hole. So if you've already got it set up, either on a Raspberry Pi, NAS drive, whatever you've got it running on, um, then we can sh I can just show you how to set that up. So. What we're going to do is we're going to go to networks, we're going to create a new network and then we'll associate that to the Wi-Fi and we'll get everything running through that pie hole. Okay, so we'll go to networks and then what I'm going to do is create a new virtual network. So I'll click on that. We'll just call this pie hole test. Um, we're running it through the Dream Router so we leave that. We're going to leave it to auto scale. Don't need to mess around with this at the moment. But we do need to come down here and go to manual. And then basically scroll all the way to the bottom where it says DHCP service management, we click show options. Then we'll get down here and DNS servers, we need to set that off auto. And then basically in here, we're gonna put our um, the IP address of wherever that uh, pie hole is. So in my case, it's my NADS drive. So I'm gonna go 192.168.200.187. Uh, and then I'm just gonna add that. 
Now, don't worry too much about your secondary DNS servers because uh, the Pi Hole has actually got secondary DNS servers built into it. So if it fails, it will run through Cloudflare in my example. Um, so you can just put the one in there. And then we're gonna say add. And now we've created that uh, network, that VLAN, we're gonna go over and create a Wi-Fi network associated with it. So if we just go to create new, just call this Pi Hole Wi-Fi, give it a password, password one, two, three. Uh, but here, rather than being on the default network, we're going to put it on Pi Test that we just created a second ago. I'm going to just put it on this U6 mesh. And that is it. We're going to add that network. Okay, so that'll take a second. You'll see the access point updating. You should see the access point updating. Um, and then we'll be able to connect to it. And then that's it. That's basically how you do it. Your, um, your network, your Wi-Fi will now be running through that Pi hole on that network. Okay, so that's it for me. Thank you so very much for watching the video. Please do think about subscribing and I'll see you next time.